from uh, 102 on the bottom. Kuf Samach Aleph. Okay, 102 on the bottom. Mishnah mm-hmm. Page 102. Mm-hmm. Ramot said that the meaning is that even the last parsha, although the Mechaber says, if it's written Stumat's puzzle, we rely on the Shita Sarosh that if it's written Psuchat's is valid. Okay? V'chein b'tfilun shel Rabbein Hutam yasa gam kulam psuchos. Av shekosei v'oyim shemoa ach ha-shma. Tiyo kam simen lamadal b'shlebura enich shit esosius ach al oretz. Shemasho pash ha-shma masho b'tchila sa-omad b'roshev. Ha-shita. Tfilun shel Rashi, the closing parsha is what? Is v'oyim shemoa. So according to Rabbi Nutam, the closing parish is Shema, so you leave nine, a space of nine letters at the end of the last sentence of Boim Shemoah, before you start Shema. Shema starts on the top line. Maschil Barosh, Shito. Dzeo so sel psucha lukuli almo, ke shehishe cholo ke dey tesosius besof Shito hatachtor abom and akodim. What determines something to be a psucho? It's an open paragraph that there's a space on the bottom of the previous paragraph. When it ended, there's minimally nine, space of nine letters. Right? Unwritten parchment. Here. It says, what happens if you started the new paragraph indented, even though it was indented less than nine letters? Till now, we, we've said what's considered... A psucha, nine letters. Less than nine letters, not psucha. What about, and where do you start the top paragraph? At the very beginning of the column. What about he invented it, less than nine letters? Where he didn't leave the pre- nine letters in the previous paragraph. He says, Harezet Parshish Nikrastubo, the Rambam. Upsula fil bidyevit. It's if you leave less than nine, im lo hischil barosha shito. He did not start at the beginning of the top of the line, but he left less than nine letters. That's called Psuma the Rambam Upsula the Evit. It's called it's puzzle. For him Megodim causes Afilum Lo Hibshech Lfnim Brosh Kadish Ovoyu Kivyacho Oshma Rak Os Achas Oshtaim. Gabkin Yishlom the Posul. Let's say you indented as much as one letter. One or two letters. Gabkin Yishlom the Posul. It's Posul. To be a Psucha, it has to start at the beginning, the beginning of the line. Cannot be indented to any degree. No, no. The Tzorchi Mizeh says it's not simple. Save my Mavarach Mashem and in Lahach Mizeh B'Dyeved HaKoponim L'Chatchi Yishadzo B'Zeh B'Od V'im Hishir Kishir Tevas Asher Nira Li D'Yish Lahach Me'Afil B'Dyeved Ari Shir Zeh B'Vada Yesh Kishish Osios Kitanos V'Yose The word Asher Aleph Shin Reish He says within that, those three letters the six letters are also his counts that's Yuds. You're able to write six Yuds. Now we saying what you wanted to say. What about if you take the from the he left six on the bottom and no three six and three on top. He indented it three and he only left a space on the bottom of six. He says you combine the six and the three, that's considered you have unwritten uh, parchment, nine letters. So Therefore, the top is, is considered, is considered, uh, that's a psucha. No, that's a psucha. It's a psucha. Of course, you combine the letters. You combine the spaces. mode. Alkain im roshi hiskala parsha filos achas lifnim shall be mokum she sirte mitchilo. I guess so. 
he says over here, let's say he started, you know, the parchment was scored, and he started to write the first letter. Let's say, okay, in Rosh, he is called a parsha, a philosophers, lefnim, shlo, bemokum, shesir, tate, mitchilo. He indented it. Your last time, she was both in there. Let's say he started one le- line, indented. He should go, and the following, le- that's the first line. He should, the next line, he should write right under that. Right, that's the new margin. Tesosios. Kosa achrom duchat tzorch loniach kede gimel tebos asher. Asher is the equivalent of nine yuds. Aleph shin reish. Alkei tzorch loniach kamkei revach melo beis osis ktanos mluvarat esosios. Tzorch loniach kamkei revach melo beis osios ketanos mluvarat esosios. I don't know what he means here. He says, therefore, you should leave a space of two letters small besides the nine. I don't know what he means besides the nine. Why? Here, if we're saying it's Asher, Asher is Aleph Shin Reish. No, no, no. One, one Asher is the equivalent of nine letters. But it's only because there's a space between Aleph, Aleph Shin Reish uh, I'm not touching. You're supposed to have a molios cotton separating from a letter to red letter. We had it before. No, one asher, one asher. A share is too big. No, a share is no. A share is one one. A share is the equivalent. A share is the equivalent of nine letters, but that's only nine yuds. That's only with the space between them. How how could a sh- olive be the equivalent of a, a yud? Olive is bigger than a yud. It's bigger than a yud. Not three times I share. Yeah. Okay. Gimel, Gimel, Tavos, which is I share. And in addition, it should be the space from the Aleph Shin Reish. How, if, if it's nine Yuds, is, is a Yud the same size? Is an Aleph larger than a Yud? Is so that what do you need three times I share? If it's only nine letters. Why the why Chathila? You don't need more than nine letters. Why is that a Chathila? Gimel Osius Asher. No, 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 just between the Aleph and, and the, the it's two, two spaces. Oh, two spaces. So, we, right. One second. He says, Tzorcha l'niach k'de gimel tevos asher. Alkei tzorcha l'niach gamke in revach mlo beis osios ketanos milvad ates osios. He says milvad ates osios. You're right. Could you write in three asher? But what do you have to, if, it, if a nine is sufficient, what do you need a share? It's, it's more than you need. You're right? Writing you're not writing, you're leaving space. You're not writing the word a share. Right. So if, if, if you have more than enough, what do you need the spaces? You, you're way over. If nine yuds are enough, right? And three a shares isn't more than nine. So what do you have to, in addition to the nine, you have to have, three, you have, to have the spaces. With the three ashes alone, it's more than nine. You understand what? what understand. The spaces between each word. Be, between each word. Between right. each so you're, three so you've got nine. you're not writing anything. I know. So good. If it should be the equivalent of three ashes. Okay, so that's to make sure you have nine letters, which are equivalent of nine yuds. But three ashes in their own right is much more than nine yuds, correct? So if that's sufficient, or well more than sufficient, what, what are, in addition, you should add spaces. What are eight spaces? Again, yeah. Why? Sounds like it's it's really since it's it's three words, so you only see them as three words if they're spaces. Really, logically, it, it, it really it's not necessary. 
Well, he says, "B'dev di eshlokel kishemineach rak melo tesosius ketanos." Dai new yudin. But factually, if you leave only a space, we you write nine, equivalent nine yuds. Umashur shulchanorach kan kos pri megoda the mishar and revach shel tesosius kfi osak sav. It would be okay. Would be okay. But he says now. How do you evaluate the size of, of the letter? Based on, on the size of the, you know, you can write something tiny. It's all based upon the way that particular script, uh, script is written. The way he writes that mezuzah, that whatever it may be, that's, that's the, the size of the yud or the size of the letters. Right? You don't say the, the smallest you can write a yud, that, that's, that's the space. But based on the size of the characters that you're writing this particular mezuzah to fill in, it's much more than that. Okay? Because from Godom Shara and Revach Shel Tesosis Kviosak Sav, Cholashira Zehu Main, the Psucha Bein Lestuma, whether it's Psucha Kstuma, it's always evaluated based on the size of the characters that you're particularly writing at that moment. Not how small you could write it. Now it's interesting. There's a locha that um, if a person interrupts a Shimon Ezra, they leave more cooler. Let's say, in the middle of Shemar Esrei, and you go out to the bathroom. Well, let's see, Birchus Kriyashma. And you go out not to your to do your bodily functions. And you're out a period of time that you could have finished Shemar Esrei from the beginning to the end. Or well, the Birchus Kriyashma beginning to the end is considered interruption. You have to start over. That's the locha. But let's say a person he says, well, the times I've said Shemar Esrei, it took five minutes. And it was only after three minutes. But, 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 but during the year, I, could, I do it in two minutes. The Shmon Esrei. That's a hefsek. During our session, made sure when he davens a longer Shmon Esrei, the Gilim Merkul is based upon the way you daven at that particular time. Since you d- say a more lengthy Shmon Esrei, so it's based on, it's each time the way you say it. It's not the longest you've ever said it. Same thing, same thing, same. It would be the same thing. Shachris. It would be. It would not be considered an interruption. It would be considered. So look at it in that context. Correct. You couldn't use the shachri. Uh, it was factually. Minutes. Factually, you would have been finished in two minutes. Then the the inter- you interrupted. It's more than two minutes. No, definitely. No, the so for himself is is, is writing over here. Right, correct. To be continued.